Okay, so as I mentioned in the email, um, today's presentation will be talking mostly about housing and transportation in the Houghton and Michigan Tech area, but I will also be covering um, some other topics such as ways to get involved in the community as well as at Michigan Tech. And just, I know with the weather presentation that I talked about last time, I talked about getting outdoors, enjoying the sites that we have in this area. And so I've included a few slides on some of the popular areas in nature in this area. So again, welcome. Thank you for joining this presentation. Um, this is supposed to be for incoming new international students. And so we look forward to meeting you when you arrive. Um, my name is Jamie Sertich and I am the International Student and Scholar Advisor in the IPS office. The first thing that I will talk about today is transportation. So I'm not sure if you've done your research, but Houghton, Michigan is a very, very small area. We are a very small, close-knit community. Um, and with that being said, a lot of the local community members have their own transportation. And so because of that, our public transportation options are not the best as compared to bigger cities such as New York or places in California, Florida, wherever it may be. Um, so for transportation options, the main one that I would recommend is the shuttle service that is provided by Michigan Tech's Transportation Services Department. Um, so they have many different shuttles throughout the summer, throughout the academic school year. Um, so one of them goes throughout the main campus and stops at various buildings. As you can see from this picture, this is the bus stop at Daniel Heights. It might look a little different now because I believe this picture is quite old, um, but they do have stops up in Daniel Heights. They also have a shopping shuttle that stops at um, Walmart, Totics, Econo Foods, which is another local grocery store. And then they also have a city commuter shuttle, which stops at some of the roads um, and the bus stops in the main streets of Houghton. So um, if you live off campus, but you're still within that range, you may be able to pick, get picked up by the shuttle, um, especially in the winter. I know the weather gets very, very cold and it might not be the best for walking conditions. So I would highly recommend the shuttle service. Um, the nice thing about this service is that it is actually free to those that are associated with Michigan Tech. So this tends to be the popular option amongst our international community. Otherwise, if this, the shuttle service at Michigan Tech does not go where you need them to, um, there is a city of Houghton and a city of Hancock transit bus. Um, you can see right here on the picture, this is what our city of Houghton bus looks like. Um, they do have links on their web pages of the, uh, the schedules as well as the rates. There, there is a charge for this service. So um, again, that's why the Michigan Tech option tends to be more attractive, um, but it is still a reliable option for you as well. And they might make stops that our Michigan Tech shuttle does not. So um, you could look into this as well if this is something that you need to utilize. I am not sure if you have heard of Lyft, but Lyft is a drive sharing service, and we do have a Lyft driver in the area. Um, I think we have about two or three Lyft drivers. However, one of them is a consistent full-time driver. Um, so again, not the most reliable option, but especially with Lyft, they tend to um, be in service on weekends or on late nights. So if you know it's after hours with the Michigan Tech shuttle or the local transit buses, Lyft might be an option for you. Um, it is fairly expensive. So, I mean, it might not be the most efficient resource for you, but again, it is there for you in case you need it. All right, so moving on to probably the most asked um, topic that we always get in our department from incoming students is housing. Mm -hmm. so mentioned already, we are a very small community and our interna international population, as great as it is that we are continuing to grow over the years, especially since COVID, it has made some issues when it comes to housing. So obviously domestic students, they may have their driver's license or a vehicle. And so they can live, you know, 15 to 20 minutes off of campus. But as an international student, that's not always an option for you. You need to be somewhere close to campus so that way you can walk or bike or take the shuttle. Um, and so we do have some on-campus housing options. And I think this picture actually captures all of the options. Um, so as you can see from this picture, we have a few residence halls on campus. However, these are mostly for undergraduate students. I'm not sure if there's any undergraduate students in this call, but I will mention these just in case. Um, so if you can see my mouse on the screen here, this residence hall is called Douglas Houghton Hall. It is one of our oldest residence yeah. halls on campus. And then right here, this long building on campus is called Wadsworth Hall. 
Um, this is one of the largest dining halls and one of the largest residence halls. In the back here, this is a new, well, somewhat new residence hall. This is called Hillside Place. And then over on the left side here is called McNair Hall. So like I said, there's a lot of um, undergraduate students that are in these residence halls. So as an international graduate student, chances are you may be placed in Daniel Heights. So Daniel Heights is considered on-campus housing. However, they are not residence halls or dorms. They are more like apartments. So you'll have a few roommates and then, you know, you have a full kitchen, full bathroom and things like that. So that'll likely be where you'll be residing if you're a graduate student on campus. There is a long wait list for Daniel Heights, unfortunately. Um, and so with that being said, if you do have any other um, options for housing, you might have to look off campus. Um, so there is a website that is through Michigan Tech, and the link is over here. Like I said, you don't need to remember this because I will be, whoops, I will be posting this um, on our social medias. But there is a website that includes all of the off-campus housing options. And they actually include them near Michigan Tech. So this is within you know, walking distance, biking distance to campus. So if you don't have your own license or your own vehicle, this might be a great option for you. All right, so moving into some things to do in Houghton and ways to get involved. So there are many student organizations on campus. Um, and one of the things that we like to mention is there is something called K-Day every fall, also known as Kiwana Day. And this is a day at one of the local beaches where all of the student organizations that are registered on campus will have a table. As you can see from this picture, this is a picture from K-Day. Um, you can see that Women's Soccer Club has a little tent and table set up. Uh, they have games, they have food. And this really gives you a chance to meet some of the organizations on campus. Um, especially being an international student, it might be hard traveling all the way across the world to a place you're not familiar with. So I highly recommend trying to branch out, make some friends, join some organizations. There are many international student groups that have organizations. Um, I know our biggest populations are Indian as well as African students. And so there's an internet, um, sorry, an Indian student association as well as an African student organization. And there are also other international groups as well. We have a graduate student government and an undergraduate student government that you may choose to be involved in. I know for GSG, for graduate students, a lot of our international students like to get involved there. There are professional organizations on campus. Um, so you might be in the College of Engineering. They may have you know, some professional student organizations where you can go on conferences, you can do workshops and try to advance your professional career. There is Greek life, so we have many different fraternities and sororities on campus. As a graduate student, if you're only a master's student, you might not be here as long, so Greek life might not be the best option for you, but it is an option as well to make friends. Um, and also the link at the bottom here will include other student organizations. I know that we have a wide range of different organizations. For example, I think at one point um, we had a Pokemon club, we have, um, you know, role playing, live action role playing, anything you can think of, we probably have an organization for it. So whatever your hobbies are, whatever your interests are, there's probably an organization for you to get involved with. And like I've mentioned many times now, we are a very small, close-knit community. And so because of that, we really, really depend on volunteers to help with local community events. So if volunteering and helping others is something that you're passionate about, there's many volunteer events that you can help out with. Um, one plug that I would like to put in for our department is every September, we have a Parade of Nations where we bring together all the international students. We have a parade, a multicultural festival. Obviously, we'd love for you to be involved with that stuff. But I mean, even if you want to volunteer to help us out and get everything planned and organized, we'd love the help. So uh, many volunteer opportunities to help, you know, pass the time and keep you busy while you're here. And like I mentioned in our weather um, presentation, it's always important to try to enjoy the outdoors. We are not a big, a big area, a big city. So what we really thrive on is our beautiful nature and our beautiful scenery that we have here. So just make sure you get out and enjoy the outdoors. We do have 
a department on campus called the Outdoor Adventure Program, also known as the OAP. And this department actually rents out equipment to students so you can enjoy the outdoors. Um, so for example, in the winter, they rent out cross country skis, snowshoes, sleds, um, things like that. And so I believe for tech students, there either is no charge or there is a discounted charge. Um, so that is definitely something to take advantage of, especially in the winter when it's cold. If you're just sitting inside all winter, you're probably not going to be feeling the greatest. So make sure you try new things, find a new hobby, and try to help your um, time at Michigan Tech be more enjoyable, especially trying to find a study, study break activity to do because I'm sure you'll be swamped with classes. Mount Ripley, as I mentioned in our last presentation, is a ski and snowboard hill that is owned by Michigan Tech. You can also go tubing there where you have this big inflatable tube that you sit on and just ride down the hill on the snow. Um, again, there are discounts for Michigan Tech students with this. And then finally, we have the Student Development Complex, also known as the SDC. So there are a wide range of things that you can do at the SDC. They have a gym where you can play badminton, volleyball, basketball. They have tennis courts. They have racquetball courts. They have a swimming pool, a sauna, which I'm not sure if you guys know what a sauna is, but it's a very popular thing up here in the Upper Peninsula as it's a Finnish thing. And this is obviously has a lot of Finnish heritage. Um, it's basically a steam room. It's a very hot room um, that's, that's made hot by different coals and you put water on the coals and it makes the steam come up. So very nice to utilize in the winter when it's cold outside. Um, but yeah, lots of things to do at the SDC. And the cool thing that as a Michigan Tech, you will pay what's called a student activities fee. And this allows you to use the SDC facilities for free. So definitely take advantage of that opportunity. And for the last part of this presentation, I'll just so, show you some um, views that I had mentioned from the local area. All of these views are within a one hour to one and a half hours um, radius from campus. So Hungarian Falls is about a 20 minute drive from campus. Um, so as you can see, beautiful waterfalls. Um, you can swim there in the summer. Um, you can hike the trails. It's I think to the waterfalls, it's about a one mile hike one way. Um, so if you wanna go hiking, you can go hike and see the waterfalls. Waterfalls. Rockway Mountain is in Copper Harbor, which is the uppermost point in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, I mentioned the fall colors in my last presentation, and as you can see, this is a view from on top of Brockway Mountain in the fall. So you can see how beautiful the trees look. Honestly, it's it honestly looks like it's fake when you're up there because it is just so breathtaking. So definitely, I would recommend visiting Copper Harbor while you're here, even in the winter. It's really nice. Like the trees, yeah, really um, like. and the snow on the trees, it's very nice. So um, definitely a must, must visit place. Prince's Point is a point on campus. If you are in the Rosé parking lot, which is our performing arts building on campus, this is just a short walk down the hill. There's a little beach area, as you can see the water. Um, there's some benches. There's also a bonfire pit. So a lot of our students like to go down there during the summer and have a bonfire, make s'mores, make food over the fire. So um, that's definitely a most convenient spot to visit because it's only a short walk from campus. The Nara Nature Trails are about a few mile um, drive or walk off of campus. So this is a little part across the road um, from the Nara Nature Park Chalet. And so you can see it kind of covers over the water. There's a nice dock. There, you can go on a walk. It's all spread throughout the water. Um, you can go hiking on these trails. Again, like I mentioned, Copper Country skiing. Obviously, um, you can't ski in this area, but there's a place across the road that also has trails that are more fit for skiing. And also, we have an animal shelter, the Copper Country Humane Society. So like I mentioned, getting out, getting out and getting involved in volunteering, the Humane Society actually accepts volunteers at all times. So you know, if you're needing a study break, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you can go to the Humane Society, you can walk some dogs, you can pet the cats and just kind of take that moment to de-stress and, and, you know, volunteer and help out the animals. So that's kind of what's going on in the Nara Nature Trail area. Here is a picture of Mount Ripley, the ski hill, snowboard hill that I had mentioned before. Um, this is actually right across the water from campus. So where I am right now in the administration building, I can look out my window and see Mount Ripley. So it's kind of cool. It's just across our bridge. And obviously this is what it looks like in the winter. You can see that there's a few different ski, ski routes. So um, even if you don't know how to ski or snowboard, you know, they always have lessons. So you can try to try to pick up a new hobby. 
I mentioned the student development complex. Um, obviously, Michigan Tech does have a hockey team, and this is where they play in the John McGinnis Student Ice Arena. Um, so obviously, this is when it's empty, but during the hockey season, almost every game, you will see all of these seats filled. Hockey is a very, very popular sport up by us. Um, so a lot of students, again, you can get the first 500 students can get in free to the hockey games. So if you want to go to them, make sure you're there early because people start lining up hours in advance. You'll see them sitting in line, playing games, eating pizza. Um, it's really a big deal here. Um, so definitely make sure that you visit a hockey game while you're here. Otherwise, I mentioned winter activities. There are skating, open skating hours during the winter that will be held in the student ice arena. Um, so you'll just come here. There's, I believe, a $5 um, ice skate rental. And then I think it's free for you to get in. So it should be only $5 if you don't have your own skates. Um, so definitely another activity you can try out while you're here. And that is all that I have for this presentation. I know that I have some questions already, so I'm going to stop sharing. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, and I'll go through and answer them. So is there a gym we can use? Correct. In the student development complex, there is a multi-purpose gym, as I mentioned, um, and there's also a fitness center. If you're looking for, you know, lifting weights, treadmills, other type of cardio machines, rowing, ellipticals, there is also a fitness center in the SDC that you also get free access to as yeah. Um, is there a running track? Yes, there is in the multi-purpose room at the SDC. There's a little, there's a few lane track that runs around it, so you can utilize that as well. I got an accommodation at Daniel Heights with one bedroom. I want to ask if my roommate and I will be sharing the same bed because when I watched the 3D version of Daniel Heights, I saw only one bed. Um, so I cannot 100% say for sure whether or not that is the case. The housing department will probably be your best resource to ask that question to. I will put their email in the chat. Um, I would say that you probably would not have to share um, a bed though, you might have to share a bedroom, but they might maybe have a bunk bed situation, but it's probably best to follow up with housing just to confirm. Um, so that way you can plan accordingly. But I know a lot of the Daniel Heights apartments also have um, couches in the living room. So I mean, if one of you chooses to sleep out there, you could, otherwise you may be able to bring your own mattress um, and put that on the floor and sleep on there. Any other questions? I'll give it a few minutes while I'm waiting for any more questions. Um, we will have another live presentation next Wednesday where I'll be talking about financial related information as well as employment opportunities. I know that um, a lot of students have already asked about getting a social security number. So we will be covering in detail more of that information in that session. So just make sure um, you join that if you have any clarification questions that you need answered. How long does the winter usually last? Good question. Um, so it really depends on the, the year because this past winter, we had a very mild winter. I think it was only about four months and there wasn't really that much snow. However, we could see winter lasting from you know three months all the way to seven months. So it really depends. Um, we've had more and more mild winters the past few years. So maybe winter will get shorter and shorter, um, but we do end up getting pretty big storms every once in a while and have you know feet of snow on the ground. So hard to really say, but about that. I want to join those student activities. Is there any chatting group for them? Um, so specifically, I think on what is called the involvement link, there should be a contact email um, that each student organization has. So what I'll actually do right now is I will link the involvement link in the chat and you can actually see what student organizations are on campus. And if you click them, there should be a contact email for you to contact one of their eboard members and they might be able to add you to any chats that they may have. So feel free to check that out for you. How far is Upper Daniel Heights from the university? So Upper Daniel Heights, obviously, as you can tell from the name, is the upper level of Daniel Heights. So it is a walk from campus, but I did mention our shuttle service, and the shuttle does stop at Upper Daniel Heights. So you can definitely use that if it works with your schedule. Um, otherwise, if you end up walking, especially since it is pretty far and it is uphill, make sure if you're traveling in the winter that you allow yourself enough time to walk to campus because it does get very slippery. But I would definitely utilize the 
um, shuttle service for that. What is the average temperature? So I think last time when I did the weather um, PowerPoint, I'll do it in Celsius. Typically we see a high of negative five degrees Celsius in the winter and a low of negative 17 degrees Celsius. So I'm sure you're panicking right now. I know a lot of you are from warmer cli climates. So um, definitely make sure you plan accordingly with your clothing and make sure you dress warm. And you, like I said, you plan for your travel. So that way you don't end up slipping or you know getting into a car accident if you're driving will transportation be available for students from the airport to campus so good question um if you're talking about the hancock cmx airport we are providing an airport pickup service from august 8th to september 8th for 20 dollars um so our student worker will pick you up at the airport and bring you to wherever you're residing. If you are living on campus at that time and it's after hours, you can still pick up your key for housing um, at public safety. And so our student will make sure to drop you off there and then bring you to your house of residence. Um, so if you are interested in that, you can find information on that on our newly admitted students webpage under the um, travel from Hancock CMX airport section. So I will also link that in the chat for you here. All right, in case you are not able to secure housing, um, what do you do as an international student? So as I said earlier, there is a wait list for housing on campus. So if you're not already on that wait list, make sure you email housing. Otherwise, there was that off-campus housing webpage that I had linked in our presentation. So I would recommend starting to look into some options there off-campus. Um, otherwise, you could reach out to some of the student organizations. Um, I know, for example, the African Student Organization, they're very, very helpful at you know welcoming their new students and trying to help them find housing and accommodations. So um, like I mentioned, student orga organizations, they're great to get involved with just to meet new people, but they're a great resource if you're a new student coming here. And yeah, again, um, the comment about not being able to find a room, I would also recommend the same thing, um, reaching out to housing, getting on the wait list and trying to look off campus. Um, in the contract, I read they will arrange a bunk bed for the one bedroom apartment and specify our beds as bed A or B, bed B. So thank you for that information. That's what I was kind of thinking because I doubt they'd you know, make complete strangers share a bed. So yeah, it looks like it'll probably be um, bunk beds. Um, you know, obviously they're probably gonna be a little bit of dorm style rooms, but like I said, Daniel Heights is more apartments where they have um, you know, a kitchen, a bathroom, a living room area and stuff like that. All right. In going for your keys at the housing department, are we required to bring some documents? So obviously at that point, you probably won't have your Michigan Tech ID. So I would just recommend bringing your passport with you so that they can see some type of photo ID. Um, and then it might be good to keep your Michigan Tech M number handy as well as they might ask for that as well. Um, so that goes for anything when you first get here, bringing your passport as well as having your M number on hand will be very helpful. So that way the departments can confirm your identity. Any other questions? Are there intercultural activities organized yearly? Um, so in terms of international students, like I mentioned, our department holds um, the Parade of Nations, which is our biggest event of the year. Um, and so that is definitely what I'd recommend for um, international students. But intercultural, um, there's always or, uh, organizations holding events on campus as well as student leadership and involvement. Um, and so when you come to campus, there's going to be something called the student scoop that every student will get um, an email about every Wednesday. And this is where one of the departments on campus will post um, the events that are going on in the week. And so normally those are intercultural. Those are really not targeted for any specific um, group. It's just for any students that are available. Um, so I'll post the link to the current blog, but I mean, you can always keep an eye on this. I mean, especially if you're already in town, um, there are still events going on during the summer too. How do I apply for on-campus jobs? There are very few openings on the handshake handle. Um, so yeah, definitely handshake is the one that we always recommend. Um, however, if there's nothing that you can see that you know is interesting to you or that works with your schedule, you could reach out to departments individually and ask them if they have any openings for the fall or the spring or whenever it may be. Um, 
of international programs and services, I'll say right now, we aren't currently hiring. Um, but if we ever hire, we will either send an email out to all international students or we will post on Handshake. So I would just recommend, you know, going around campus, asking any departments if they have anything available. Otherwise, your academic department, they might have, you know, research positions available for you or something like that to help you get involved with your department. So that's always an option for you. Is there any form of transportation from Chicago to campus aside from the arrangement from Hancock to campus? And I also had a similar question about asking for a ride from Chicago to Houghton. Um, so for both of those answers, unfortunately, we are not having our Chicago O'Hare pickup this year. And so I would recommend to all students to fly directly into Hancock CMX Airport and then utilize our, our pickup service from Hancock CMX, just so you can guarantee a ride. Um, otherwise, I mean, we do have local taxis that if you aren't here in the time that we're providing our service, you could try to call those um, and get a ride from them. Otherwise, um, from Chicago, I believe there also is um, a bus that will drive. It's not through Michigan Tech at all. Yeah, you're going. It's a bus that goes um, from Chicago all the way to Houghton. I think it's called Indian Trails, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they actually do stop on campus. So even if you do take the Indian Trails bus, we can also pick you up from that bus stop and then bring you to your place of residence if you're landing within that um, time frame. We have our bus service. So you, again, you can fill out our Google form and purchase a ticket if that pertains to you. Um, However, the one thing I will mention, because I know I invited everyone that has been admitted to this in these presentations, is we are only offering these services if your visa has already been approved. So that way we don't have to deal with any refunds or trying to get people's money back if they don't end up getting approved. Can I get an SSN number without a job? And can I open a bank account without an SSN number? Um, so unfortunately, you will not be eligible for a social security number unless you are receiving funding from the United States or have a job um, on campus. There are some banks in the local area. The one that I would recommend is Flagstar Bank, and I'll put that in the chat. Um, they are one of the banks that are closest to campus. They're within walking distance from where I am in my building right now. It's just right across the road. Um, they do not require a social security number to open an account. Um, and so because of that, they're very, um, you know, helpful with our international community, especially when it comes to international wire transfers and things like that. Um, so when you get to campus, I would definitely recommend visiting Flagstar and getting set up there. Any other questions? I guess now that I have another brief moment, I'll just put our email back in the chat as well. If you do have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to us with anything that you may have any doubts or concerns about. Um, even if it's not something our department can handle, definitely reach out and we'll try to get you to someone that can. Um, I know insurance is also a frequently asked question. So here is student insurance's email as well if you need that. Um, otherwise, I'll give Another minute or two for any last minute questions we may have. Um, like I mentioned, this will be posted on our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook if you need to refer back to anything I talked about today or any questions that I had answered. All right, any last questions? Again, we will be having our employment and financial information um, webinar next week. I just had a question to get a link to the YouTube channel, so I will get that for you right now. Uh, but yeah, like I mentioned, if you have more questions about um, employment, whether that's on campus, CPT, OPT, we will be covering a lot of that um, in next week's webinar, as well as how to get a social security number. And I will be joined by Michelle Borsum, who is our manager of um, employment services. Here is the link to our YouTube channel, late arrival letter. So unfortunately, we do not have um, the ability to process late arrival letters. I know the graduate school requires that students are here before the start of the semester. So I'm not sure if they are approving late arrivals, but however, you'll talk, have to talk to the Dean of Students office if you do need to arrive late because they will need to approve that um, for you. 
does the indoors complex have long tennis courts? So I'm not sure the sizing of them. However, I do know that Michigan Tech tennis teams do have um, matches and stuff there and practices. So I'm assuming they're just regular standard size tennis courts. Um, and I know they have certain hours in which you're able to go there because obviously the tennis team is there practicing, has meets and stuff like that. So um, you can always visit the SDC website to get those hours. <coughs> Okay, is there any penalty for arriving in the graduate orientation week to late visa approval? Um, I guess, what date are you planning on arriving? I'll have to ask for clarification on that so I can answer your question. Is there any swimming pool in our school? Yes, in the student development complex, they do have two different pools. They have a deeper pool that has diving boards as well as a high dive. And then they also have a shorter, um, smaller pool that has swimming lanes where you can just swim, you know, as needed in your own lane. Or you can play, um, they have a basketball hoop in there that you can play uh, water basketball and stuff like that. So, yeah, that is part of the um, facilities that you can use as a student. 20th of August. So I think 20th of August should be okay. Um, our semester starts on August 26th. So as long as you're or then um, that would be great. Once you do arrive on campus, if you are a little later, close to the semester start, make sure you check in with our department as soon as possible. Um, we are located in the administration building, room 200, and I will put that in the chat as well. Um, so you have to bring your passport, visa, and I-20 or DS-2019, depending on what visa status you are. <laughs> Any other questions? Otherwise, I'll get wrapped up shortly here. Like I said, if you do think of any questions, feel free to reach out to our department and we'll do our best to assist you. But otherwise, I guess we'll end it here. Thank you guys for joining. Um, I appreciate your time and your attention and I hope to look forward to meeting you soon if you get your visas approved and have a good summer.